it's Jan, back at it with another video about books. So if you don't like my bookish videos, sorry, they're gonna keep coming because I read too much, it's becoming a problem, but I love it, so. I'm like tired, again, like in all my videos, but we're trying to be productive today, okay? It's my day off work, we're trying to get stuff done. We already had a productive morning today. I, you know what, you guys don't care, but basically I got up before 7 a.m. I read, I went to the gym, we checked out a new gym, my, me, my friend and I, um, Casey, she lives literally a building over and we just started hanging out again. And yeah, so productive morning, long story short. Anyways, today's video is gonna be my top 10 books of 2019. It is a little bit later than than like what when other people posted this video, but I told myself I'd get this edited and posted before January 10th. It's January 7th right now, so we are right on schedule according to Jan time. So that's all good. Anyways, so obviously top 10, there's 10 books. Six of them I have physical copies of right here, and then the other four are from the library and stuff. So don't have those. I have the list on my phone. So just in case I mess it up, I'm gonna pull it up. Okay, so let's get right on into it So we don't waste anybody's time. So book number one. Oh, and literally four four of these ten books are by Taylor Jenkins Reid I've talked about her before. She's my favorite author. She writes adult fiction. I love her so much Every book that I've read by her. I think I've only not read one or two every other one that I've read by her I've cried. I've laughed. I felt all the feels in all of her books and like every character that she writes is just so like unique and like deep there's so many layers to each character and I'm just blown away by all her books book number one the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Jenkins Reid <sighs> I reckon this is the first book I recommend to anyone who asks me for book recs. So Evelyn Hugo is this Hollywood star from the 50s, but in present day she's 79. And she asks this girl, Monique, who's a reporter, to write her life story. And it's just like randomly Monique's like so confused. I think it is Monique. Yeah, Monique. Okay, I thought I messed up the name. She was so confused why this big, huge superstar picked her to write her story, but of course she took the opportunity and then you learn all about Evelyn Hugo's life and obviously her seven husbands and like all the background about why she had to have seven husbands and like, you know, the 50s, like women were so impress oppressed at that time. Like they didn't have the freedom to do what they wanted. You were either a housewife or you were basically worthless at that time period. Um, that might be kind of harsh, but like true also. She had to like, you know, keep all these lies and all these secrets because of that time period. And then until she, to this day, at 79 years old she was keeping this lie and there's a plot twist and then you learn about why she chose Monique out of all people to write her story and it's just amazing and so deep and like oh I love this book so much I will read this over and over I have to reread this literally once a year I swear like I love this book so much five out of five stars obviously all of these are five out of five stars but that's number one. Number two is After I Do by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I just watched this video that was talking about, or no, I was listening to a podcast called The Currently Reading Podcast. It's the only podcast that I listen to. I realized that I could only listen to podcasts if it's about books. Go figure. But one of them was saying how there's not a lot of books about the After I Do point in life, and I was like, girl, after I Do by Taylor Jenkins Reid is literally called After I Do. So this book is about a couple, uh, the girl's name is R Lauren and the guy's name is Ryan and they've been married for six years but like they, you know, are struggling through their marriage, they're arguing all the time, have these arguments that my boyfriend and I have all the time <laughs> and literally I related so hard. I read this at the perfect time in my life. Like I felt so alone before I read this book and then it was just so relatable. Like I thought I was psychotic for like having some of these arguments with my boyfriend like the literal but then literally I read this book and the first page is about this argument that they had at a Dodgers baseball game. Okay, we go to baseball games and like we've been to Dodger Stadium, but like, and we've seen a game there, obviously, like, but we, that's not the point. The point was, the argument was about the guy forgetting where he parked and like the girl knowing where he parked, but he wouldn't listen to her and literally my boyfriend and I had that exact same argument. And it was just from that point on, I just could not stop reading. It was so good. Like, it's such a fast paced book because like, she doesn't really have chapters. Like, they're just, there's just like a big space at the top 
and it's just like the next section but like, the chapters are super short and uh, you just learn so much about each character why they do the things they do and it's about love and like finding your way back to each other or if they don't find their way back to each other i don't know no spoilers here it's just like a roller coaster and i love it so much because it was so relatable i can't even explain it but after i do by taylor jenkins read that's number two. Number three, I think is also Taylor J yep. Number three is also by Taylor Jenkins Reid and it's Daisy Jones and the Six. This came out last year and it was so hyped up and like rightfully so because it was so freaking good. Oh, I forgot I highlighted in this book, but this is about a fictional band from the 70s, I believe. Yeah, the 70s called The Six and then Daisy Jones joins them later. And it's all in an interview format, which I thought I wasn't going to like. This is the first book I read by Taylor Jenkins Reid, but obviously I loved it. Five out of five. Like I said, all her characters are just so layered. Like they just have so much going on for them and you just learn so much about their personality and like their reasonings behind their actions and why what made them who they are today it was so good and you get all the like the sex drugs and rock and roll of the 70s and it was just like so edgy and daisy jones is so edgy <laughs> i can't think of another word right now it was a phenomenal book i i would read this over and over again too there, and there's a plot twist in this one too i just cannot rave enough about taylor jenkins reed she is amazing if i meet her ever i will probably lose my shit. I would just fangirl so hard. So hard. <laughs> okay, next one is, oh, I'm gonna have to insert a picture, but number four is The City Baker's Guide to Country Living. I read this for the Gilmore Girls Readathon to fill the challenge for food being part of the story. I love a good small town book. Okay, I love good small town shows and movies. And this one was one of my first like small town books. I can't think of any other books I've read, but this one was so like Gilmore Girls-esque. She works at an inn, she bakes, she's like the book version of Suki from Gilmore Girls. If you're a Gilmore Girls fan, you'll know what I'm saying. And she works at an inn set in the small town in Vermont and she's from a big city. I think she's from Boston and she moves to the small city in Vermont with her friend, her best friend. And then, you know, she gets used to the small town life. She like meets everyone in the town, joins all these like apple pie baking contests and like the county fair and just all the vibes and there's like complicated love interests and just the romance that she, louise oh it's by louise miller she is just such a good writer in terms of like just interacting the characters with each other i read her second book too i think this one was her debut but her second book the late bloomers club wasn't as good so i'm glad i read the city baker's guide to country living first at first i was like okay maybe i'm not a small town book type of person and then things happened and i was like Oh my god, I am emotional. I am just the epitome of emotion. I was just so shook by the end too. Like I thought it was a few more pages, like I didn't want it to be over. I thought it was like longer and then I thought a chapter was just ending, but it was actually the whole book and I was just so shook. I, I remember finishing it on the way to Fort Wayne for a concert and I was just so confused that it was over. Not that the ending was confusing or that it like should have kept going. I just wished it kept going because it was so good. That's number four. Number five I think is another Taylor Jenkins Reid book. Yeah, number five is One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Okay, Okay, this one I immediately purchased from Amazon right after reading it through ebook because I just felt so hard for some of these two. Jesse, her high school sweetheart, went on a trip somewhere. I don't remember where it was to. I think it was Alaska or some tropical island or I don't know. Somewhere out of the country. So it wouldn't be Alaska. I don't freaking know. Okay, I'm dumb. Aleutian Islands. Okay, he goes to the Aleutian Islands and his plane crashes or his helicopter or whatever crashes and he's supposedly dead and so emma you know moves on after a grieving and everything and she meets sam well she re-meets sam and then they end up getting engaged no spoilers like you know this it's in the synopsis i just saw it right now real quick and then you find out jesse's not dead still no spoilers it's still in the synopsis this story is basically about emma trying to choose which one she really wants to spend her life with if jesse and her have you know grown apart from each other or if like, she's just shook that he's actually alive and she needs to get used to him again or if she picks sam who's like loved her through everything and has accepted that like, she is grieving the loss of this 
high school sweetheart husband and like he's been through it all and blah 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 if she wants to start something new with him. So it was a great story. I loved it. Taylor Jenkins Reid once again did it again. Love her. The next one. Okay, that was the last Taylor Jenkins Reid book, I promise. The next one, number six of 2019 is Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, the illustrated edition. All right. So I've talked about this a million times in my past few videos, but I got the illustrated edition for my birthday back. In I can't talk. Oh my god. I got the illustrated editions for my birthday back in July. My boyfriend bought them for me, the three pack, and then I bought myself the fourth one in November when it came out. So I started reading it. This was my first reread of the Harry Potter series. I read the I read the whole series for the first time, um, I think three, two to three years ago. I was just like, I don't understand. I'm still super confused. And like, I feel like I just read that to read that just to like join the bandwagon, you know? And then I read the illustrated editions and I was like yeah, I, I get it bought myself a Gryffindor flannel even though I realize I'm probably a little bit more Ravenclaw but you know whatever and then I took like the house quiz or whatever and I got Slytherin so I don't know anymore point is I love Harry Potter now as much as the next person I just love them I love him I love the illustrated editions it's such a different experience from the regular editions I said I would reread the whole series even past the fourth one but I think like I just have so much on my TBR that I think I'm just gonna keep waiting for the illustrated editions to reread them but the first one I was just like whoa I don't even remember some of this happening from the first time I read this and I feel like that's gonna keep happening with Harry Potter because there's such big books yeah the first one just was just like overwhelmingly like I understand now you know I don't know I'm 22 years old and I just got into Harry Potter what I don't understand either I'm embarrassed to say that but the illustrated edition started it all for me but number seven in my top 10 books of 2019 is Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nyan Nan I don't know but I've talked about this a few couple times on my channel. So it's about this fantasy kingdom where there are three casts. So there's paper cast, steel cast, and moon cast. I always get this mixed up so I gotta. Paper is fully human and then I'm pretty sure moon is fully demon. Okay st yeah steel is part human and part demon and then moon cast is fully demon. Like I said in my other video talking about this book, I think I talked about this in a wrap up or something. Just the way the author like writes the characteristics of especially like the part human part demon ones they're just it's just so vivid like you can clearly see how their features mix. And there are trigger warnings for sexual abuse, harassment, domestic violence, rape, trigger warnings for all of that but if you can get past that for a while it's just such a good book. It's mostly about women like like standing up for themselves and trying to fight for what's right because basically the paper girls are what they're called when you get taken from your family and into this kingdom to be served as basically a sex slave for the demon king and which is so fucked up I know but there's more to the story than all that like the girl I forgot her first name forgot her, Lee I think is her lay Lay meets like all the other girls and there's a uh, female female romance and it's a beautiful book like Natasha's uh Tasha Nans, Nans, writing is just so poetic and like lyrical and the way it, it just flows really well. In my opinion, I got the second one. It just came out recently a few months ago. I think it was either October or November. I don't know. One of the burr months. The second one came out and it's called Girls of Storm and Shadow. I have that and I'm excited to read it. I have to read it soon before I forget the things that happened here. Yeah, okay. That's number seven. Book number eight I got from the library. It's called The Undoing of Thistle Tate. It's about this girl named Thistle Tate who is supposedly this like world-renowned author and she's like this prodigy writer because she's super young. And then you find out that like she's not the one writing the books actually. So it's just her trying to keep up this lie, figuring out life going through high school and like all this fame and just like living the like celebrity life under a lie basically. And then, you know, trying to figure out her love life and just finding herself in the midst of all this like chaos that she didn't even want to create in the first place. It was just a good book. It went really fast. I was hooked from the first page. It's by, I forgot the author honestly. I feel bad so I gotta look it up. I think it was like Katie, Catherine, Caitlin by Caitlin Detweiler. I just love a good book about books 
So that's what got me. All right, almost done guys. Book number nine in my top 10 is The Thousandth Floor by Catherine McGee. I just finished the second book in the trilogy, The Dazzling Heights. I finished it yesterday and it's just so amazing. At first, okay, The Thousandth Floor took me so long to get through because there's just so many characters. Like if you love Gossip Girl, like these are the books for you. It's just so many Gossip Girl vibes, like the lies, the scandals, the freaking like cons, secrets, and all these fucked up people because they're so caught up in like the rich world it's great once you get to like once you get a grasp of each of the characters and who they are how they're connected and stuff then it becomes a good story at first i was just like what i am so confused who is this who is that what but now i just i can't wait to read the third one the third one's not at my library and i don't want to buy it without buying the other two so i'm gonna read the third one on ebook and i'll just buy the full series eventually through amazon or something but it's just so good it's literally gossip girl in a book i swear i mean i know gossip Gossip Girl started out as a book, but you know what I mean? There's just so much drama and I can't wait for this to hopefully turn into a TV series too. I feel like it'd be too similar to Gossip Girl, but it's set in the future. It's in like 2030 or something like that. No, that's way too, I think it's like 2300. And they all live on this like super tall building with a thousand floors in the middle of New York and the thousandth floor, obviously like thousandth floor is where all the richest people, like the fullers, they're called the fullers and it's this family who owns the whole floor. And then like, as you go lower, it's like lower class people. There's just a mix of all of them in the books and you just, it's a grand old time. Okay, then my last book, number 10 of my top 10 of 20, 10 books of 2019 is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. So this was my first audiobook that I listened to on Audible and I'm glad it was because I don't know I just couldn't get myself to read the physical book. I'm not into like political stories that much. Well I wasn't. I can tolerate them more now. Like I just read this book called Rebel Girls about like feminism and abortion and stuff but this one I was like I don't think I can get through this physically so I was like this is a good audiobook to start with and it was great like the narrator was awesome the main character stars humor is great and you can hear it in the audiobook it covers pretty serious topics like racism and pro police brutality whoa Whew. I talk too much. Racism and police brutality, injustice in general. Just the execution of the book is very well done. Angie Thomas is a great writer. I can't wait to read On the Come Up. It's just a big book, so I'm like hesitant right now because I want to read so many other books, but I will get to that eventually. Yeah, I think that's all I have to say about that. Those are my top 10 books of 2019. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you had a great day. Yeah. Oh, I wanted to say, if you're curious about the 71 books I read in 2019, I was going to make a video of me just listing it, but I was like, why, why would I do that and waste my time? I just wrote them all down in a blog post. I will link my blog down below and the blog post itself. I have like my, what the books are, the authors, and what my five-star rating was. So yeah, there we go.